All right, so we go from this introduction to this amazing Gungan right. city right. to this conversation with what appears to be the leader of the Gungans, Boss right. Nass. Yes. What were some of your just impressions of the scene that unfolds here with Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, <laughs> Boss Nass, Jar Jar, yeah. the whole gang? I... <laughs> I don't know if I have the words. I mean, I just... <laughs> we are treated to so many unique yes. voices and characters mm-hmm. in the first... What are we, about 18 minutes into this We're film? getting close to that, yeah. Um, Boss Nass has got to be close to the top. <laughs> um, I, I think... Yeah. Is he... Is he dim-witted? A, is he a dim-witted fool? I think if we put him in comparison with real world politicians, oh, and especially if we're looking at like tribalism, right? Yeah, I, I think that he matches up where he he, he would just he display. I, w- I will say no, he's not dim witted. I would say that he displays like the typical tribalism um, mentality, where it's just like I I don't care what happens to them. Doesn't affect me. Yeah, I'm and even just... if it does. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fascinating interaction. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he's weak-minded if we go by kind of right. the Jedi's I- right. idea idea of what strong-minded people are. Right. Because Qui-Gon Jinn manipulates the <laughs> shit out of him. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. just like, give he's me this, give me Geppetto, that. Geppetto, baby. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what? I mean, it's a fascinating scene because I, th- I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, Obi-Wan did it, did the... Yeah. In the original Star Wars, right, he because right. they were in some serious trouble. Right, right. Like he's saving yeah. people's lives, yeah. basically. Maybe Qui Gon's doing that. I don't know, but he is just going to town. I remember yeah. when I watched him, like, oh, oh, he's a little bit of a different Jedi here. Yeah, like, he's a straight up manipulator. <laughs> yeah, straight up manipulator. Is, I mean, yeah. are you okay with Qui Gon doing what he's doing? Okay, I'm jealous as hell. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, we've we've had so many conversations yeah. on the podcast about, especially at this point in history, if the Jedi are actually being Jedi or yeah. not. Yeah. And so, I have no problem with Qui Gon, and I have no problem with what he's doing based on what he needs at that given time. Yeah, in the in the scene, it's really interesting because Qui Gon does a few things that really puts him up at, at the top of my list of mm. great Jedi. Wow. And here's, it's a subtle one, and just on the rewatch, I, I started to pick up on it, is, so first, he he sees that they're at an impasse. Ain't nothing yeah. going to happen. He ain't yeah. getting any yeah. anything, really. Right. And there's urgency on his part. Like, things are not good. I need to get right. to, to feed right. and help that right. situation. So he's like, speed us on our way. Yeah. We need to go. So I love that about him. But then, but he also does something really unique in this in the scene is he allows his student, he mm. allows his apprentice mm. to argue in the situation, mm. like argue for this idea of balance, like, right. you know, one, you know, right. there, this symbiotic circle, right. like we... Right, surely you understand that. Yeah, that like, sense, don't right. you... And, and Qui-Gon is totally content. Mm. He's already at a point where it seems like he realizes ain't nothing going to come out of this. Yeah. and But he allows Obi-Wan to... To grow and to argue mm. for this position that right. they obviously both share. Right. Risa no like the Nabu. The Nabu think they so smarty. They think they brain so big. Once those droids take control of the surface, they will take control of you. Risa no think so. They not know of Usen. You and the Nabu form a symbiont circle. What happens to one of you will affect the other. You must understand this. We should know care about uh, Nabu. And I, I wonder, you know, if there's going to be upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff that kind of explores how he's learned those lessons. Mm. Because he's very... If you, The scene is acted in a way by Ewan McGregor where he, it's almost like he's learned that lesson at some point mm. in his life. He's like, surely... Yeah. You need to understand this. Yeah. And it's almost like he's speaking from, even though he's young, like experience as though something happened. I'm really intrigued by that. But more as this teacher and student mm. where he's allowing his, Qui-Gon's allowing right. his student to like right. speak. I, yeah, I that's know. an interesting insight. And you yeah. kind of wonder if at that point in their relationship and at that point in Obi-Wan's training, was it something that 
they had done that previously. It's not quite good cop, bad cop, right? Yeah, but, it, it is. but it's a clear invitation for the mentee to kind of step in and, and take whatever control they have of the situation. Yeah, and he totally doesn't shut him down. He like allows it and he's like, well then speed us on our way. Right. Like, we want to try, didn't work, let's go. Right. And so it's a fascinating, again, as we watch The Phantom Menace for me, yes, the Gungans, the city's interesting, Jar Jar, mildly entertaining. Yeah. It's this relationship, mm-hmm. it's the character of Qui-Gon Jinn, yeah. it is Obi-Wan Kenobi, my favorite character in Star Wars. Yeah. It's it's their interactions. It's their relationship. They for me, they're driving the Phantom Menace, yeah. and that's a little moment that I think a lot of people just overlook. But it shows something into their relationship that I think is really interesting. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> You're waiting for that, weren't you? Woo! <laughs> Got a headache now. Drink some more, man. Mm.